Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today I bring you an interesting one. This one actually almost escaped my line of sight. Um, I accidentally came across it and I reached out to uh, XVX Warmier. And I was like, hey, do um, you guys got a spare one of these that I could take a look at for a review? And they're like, oh yeah, we haven't offered you one of these yet. And I'm like, no. So they went ahead and sent it out to me. It did come from... Um, China, I did already check. It is fine. The box just took a little bit of a hit. And today we are reviewing the S-K80. Now, the S-K might give you pause and make you think that it's an aluminum board because the S-K71. This is not. This is a plastic board, but it does have a trick up its sleeve. Let's go ahead and open up this poor mangled box and give a look at what's inside the box. All right, before we take a look at the keyboard, let's see what we have in here. We have a, oh, this is actually a nice one. That's a USB braided, um, USB-A to USB-C cable. We also have a user manual uh, that appears to be all in English and has all of the, uh, the shortcuts and the controls. And then we have a switch and keycap puller that is unbranded, but it's a standard wire one. And here we are with the XVX S-K80. It's a 75% with a screen that's actually at a little bit of an angle, which is nice because a lot of screens are flush with the uh, the case and that angle could actually be a little more difficult for viewing. Screens, yes, they're more of an aesthetic thing, but they allow you to further customize your keyboard. Now this one really takes the customization to another level as we have this, um, Oh, it feels textured, so it it could be like a um, like a heat processor or a heat dye process that they put on there. But I love how it matches with the um, with the keycaps. Um, it's the very nautical. It's the um, I forget what the name of this artwork. It's Japanese wave artwork. Um, now, as I've stated before, I like having novelty keys, but if a company is going to include novelty keys, I really wish that they would also include non-novelties. Like, I'd like an F6 for there. Yes, I know what it is. I'd like an Escape. I'd like an Enter. Um, I don't think it's that much to ask. Um, because it's like, maybe I don't want novelty keys. Or maybe I only want to use one novelty key. Or maybe I can't use novelty keys at work for whatever reason. It kind of limits somebody and they might just either skip buying the board or you know figure out the cost of having to buy a whole set of keycaps just to get the board that they want now let's go ahead and take a look at see what we have underneath uh, these keycaps all right the keycaps do appear to be die sub but they are pretty thick 1.4 millimeters ah, that's actually pretty decent um, I'm going to say they're because they're die sub, they're most likely PBT keycaps. Um, but they have a nice texture to them, but you can definitely feel the thickness. Now, for switches, it looks like we have a black box stem layer. Yeah, it's a. Huh, I would almost call it a. Um, oh, it's an Otemu. I would almost call, call it like a. Like a black ink clone. I mean, not quite as smooth, but it's not pingy. It has probably a 3.8, 3.6 millimeter travel, so it has a long pull. Shouldn't have any issues with cherry keycaps, as these appear to be. And we are in the south facing orientation, which is always good to see as well. Let's take a look at these stabilizers here. They're ever so lightly lubricated. I mean, just the tiniest amount of lubrication, but I think it's pretty good. It's not globbed on there. Down below, we can see that, do we have a, yep. We have a PET layer with an IXPE layer on top of it. And thankfully it has already been punched out and we do not have support for screw-on stabilizers. Wait a minute. 
Do we? Oh, I actually think we might. But I think I'd have to open it to make sure. All right, on the bottom we can see real quick that we have a um, Windows and Mac switch, and I almost want to call that a weight, though it's not. And not my favorite type of uh, USB ports, but I mean, for those of you that want to be able to route it either to the left or right or right up the middle, you have that option. Oh, I flipped over because I'm curious if it, this is only a clip. Let's see. We will find out soon enough. Oh, appears to be only clips. As always with these clip cases, you want to make sure that you've got all the clips disengaged before you start wanting to pull things apart. Make sure that you don't break any of those clips. All right, so lifting up on here. Oh, we have a pretty nice long ribbon cable and look at that we have a top mount not a gasket mount but a top mount go figure huh very very interesting but I do not yeah I don't see the capability for um, screw and stabilizers though so that one had me tricked I was looking over here uh, huh. Yeah, the the PCB does have some flex cuts on it, and those hot swap sockets are. I don't see a brand on there. I'm curious if these could be the new um, Otemu ones that I've been hearing about, but I still have yet to see. So we do have a what appears to be a modified top mount with a little bit of gasket action going on and then we can see we got the daughter board there we have some really open cell foam in there there's definitely room for improvement inside of here but it's nice to see something different um, in this case a top mount and hmm we're getting more and more interesting with these keyboards I gotta say So let's go ahead and stick the stabilizer back into place. Go ahead and lock them. Well, they're actually quite well attached to the polycarbonate plate, so um, at least we do have that. We may not have the ability to do screwing, but we have some really decent... Yeah, there's definitely flex. This being a top mount, there's still flex to it, surprisingly enough. This one could use a little bit more grease, but we'll do that when we come back to it because I'm definitely going to be coming back to this one. Um, so we basically have a keyboard that it's already kind of got the uh, the modding for the plate and the PCB, though we could still take it apart. But we do seem to have a silicone padding between the plate and the PCB. We have the IXPE. Um, and uh, atop the PET layer that's atop of the PCB um, and then that light self dense foam down at the bottom now I would want to and I probably when I come back to this I think this is a perfect one for a silicone pour um, we're probably gonna have to take the daughter board out while we do it but I think it will make for a nice result that and uh, I would do tempest tape as well I think that and some different switches will uh, make this keyboard a whole lot better. Don't get me wrong, though. For what this is, it's actually not that bad sock. Actually sounds pretty good it feels pretty good it's not too heavy so it's not too substantial but it wouldn't take much I mean even if I didn't want to take the time to, to do a silicone pour which really doesn't take that much longer because basically you mix it 
you pour it before it sets and then you let it set for about an hour to eight hours depending on what type of uh, epoxy silicone it is um, though we could probably just get kill mat stick it in there and that would probably be if not the same quite similar the tempest tape mod would also make this a little bit more poppy than it sounds a little mechanical now I think it would make it a little more marbly I gotta say, this is one of the few keycap sets I have not picked up yet, even though I like uh, Japanese aesthetics. So it's nice that I have now got this keycap set on a keyboard. But again, if I wanted to switch out the F6, I'm not too big of a fan of the Legends. So when I come back to it, I'll probably have a couple of keycap sets. Heck, I think even um, Hammerhead or a Dolch might look good on here and might blend in quite well with the uh, the waves or I might just use some of the um, the keys that already come on here as as novelty keys with a different keycap set because that one I mean I'll probably keep that one in the shifts I'll get rid of these because I really don't like that tiny bags the, the tiny legends it has on here and that font is it's just not good, it, in my opinion. Though they are pretty thick, and I, like I said, for a lot of people, I think they're going to be fine with this, especially if they like the aesthetics. Um, I think a Tempest tape mod is probably enough to bring life out of this. Let's take a look at the screen real quick and see what the RGB looks like. RGB is nice and bright, and it is getting... Uh, It is coming through quite nice and getting um, the PC plate is acting almost like a, a diffuser and allowing those lights to really come through. So even though they're um, south facing, right? We are, yeah, we're south facing here. I had to rethink for a second and they're going through black translucent switches. So we can see here that we have, we have the different, um, so if we switch over to Mac, down at the bottom, we will see that that will switch over to Mac. If we have Windows lock on, it will show you that. If we have Caps lock on, it will show you that either here or here. And then if we want to go to the Custom, all right, Effect. Oh, those are the light effects. set of color, the brightness, the speed, volume, and language, and there is our animation. So basically we're using function and the arrows. Volume indicator only bounces, but the slider bar doesn't show us. So there we can see the animation that comes preloaded, but of course I'll go and take a quick look at it um, to see what it's like. But it, from from the software that I see on here, it seems to be very similar to like uh, how what the Royal what Royal Kludge and Key Duos have um, adopted on their screen boards, and it's far better than like say the Zoya implementation that has a separate program. But just my impression. So we have a pretty decent sounding 75% with a screen. We have uh, four, a navigation cluster of four keys in a column. Uh, we have the arrow cluster has been broken up. So we got the one and um, one and three quarters sh right shift. Uh, but beyond that, we have standard layout. Well, we have the one, one, one U key caps on the right of the space bar. 
But I gotta say, even though I'm not a big fan of the font, I still like looking at this keyboard. It looks nice. I like that this is not covering the entire front of the keyboard. It's just kind of, it's a bit of a highlight. It's more of a, um, a touch of art instead of soaked in art. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the XVX Warmier S-K80. It is wired 75% with a customizable TFT display. It comes preloaded with Otemo clear black linear pre-lubed switches with a PC top, a palm bottom, and 50 grams of force. They are also available in a white color that comes with Otemo clear white switches. The keycaps are a die sub cherry profile PVT in the Kanagawa Wave colorway. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 36 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of eight degrees. Flipping out the first set of included feet will raise the back up to 43 millimeters, providing for an angle of typing of 11 degrees. Using the final set of flip out feet will raise the back up to 49 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to 14 degrees. This keyboard weighs in at 645 grams and currently manufacturer retails for $79.99 on xvxchannel.com and is available for $10 off with the code NRSK80. All right, so we went ahead and plugged it up and we got a new GIF loaded um, or animation. It's a fairly basic, but it does have function layer, or it has one function layer, um, and you can also do momentary or tap. So it has a little bit more functionality as some of the other programs, but only one function layer, but I've seen too many that don't even have a function layer. So um, the uploading of the animation was a very simple process, and I did have to do an update prior to, I saw that there was two files, one was a patch update, I opened it, I ran it, very quick and simple. Um, I don't see any difference, but I hadn't really used the keyboard that much. Um, the animation loaded up fairly quick. I've got a Terminator um, animation. I don't think I have the speed set just right. I could probably increase the frame rate on there. But I'm actually surprised at how well it looks for such a tiny little display. Now I gotta say, uh, price of this keyboard, probably a little much. Uh, I mean, I don't want to sit here and compare, but it's hard not to. So here we have the GMK81. Now we do have a blocker here. I prefer the four columns. We do have a screen that's flat, so I'm not going to be able to see it if it's not at an angle. Granted, I... Oh, this is sitting on the actual cable. That's why it's up like that. But I can see it here from an angle here. I'd have to go more on top of it. It's a nice screen, but it doesn't have very good viewing angles. Um, now, take into consideration, say if we use the discount code this one has to make it $70. Uh, this one I paid, I want to say $28, maybe $29 with taxes. Um, the switches I have on here are milky yellows so those were roughly 15 bucks roughly roughly um i mean i'm i'm just kind of averaging here so let's say let's say 30 let's say 15 for the switches we're at 45 and then a keycap set 20 25 so we're looking at 65 70 we're in about the same price range um now granted like i said this one has that little touch of um of art to it uh, you might say they're both south facing they both have pc plates this one is via it's not true via but it is via but if you want to upload an animation you have to use a separate executable so if you're on linux either one you're kind of kind of be in a boat going up the creek but at least with this one you can make programming changes now with the gmk series that they've been releasing with via i have been finding one little bug and i want to let people know if you're in a windows mode and you know you're in windows mode and this one doesn't have the switch um 
this one only has like the Bluetooth 2.4, but I forget if it's mapped to these two keys. Basically, you want to go from Windows to Mac and back to Windows, and that usually will switch where it will control your key arrangements. See how that one sounds a little harsher? This one sounds a little more muted, and it's different. They're not the same by any means, though they do share some similarities and also you got to consider this one is a three mode so but i'm just putting up there for comparison i think that they're both um pretty good i think that this one will require a little bit more work to have it sound as good as a gmk um, but i don't think it will be much at all honestly a little bit of a thicker um, dampening down below the pcb case not that open cell foam and I do a Tempest tape mod. Now, I would probably go with some different switches. I can almost, I just, just to experiment. Let's see what it's like. I got a few milky yellows here, just out of curiosity. So I wanna see what the difference is, just real quick, in sound, because the other, the GMK that I just pulled out has milky switches in it. Yeah, milky yellows. These are milky yellows, and I've, they're the pros, the KS, KS9, oh, I get those mixed up. So even though they came pre-lubed, I still lubed them up again just to uh, add that little bit more. I don't think it really did that much. I think I just did some more work for myself. But <laughs> So these are from the same batch that I loaded up in that GMK. But I just want to see how much of a difference these make if the Otemus are being a little bit clackier um, than the milky yellows might be so we got these on the G H and J keys yeah it's closer that's for sure so the switches are gonna make a big difference I think if we um like I said putting some foam down below doing a Tempest tape mod I think this one's gonna sound quite similar to that one maybe even better who knows? Uh, again, um, for those of you that do not need wireless, you've got this. But again, you don't have Via. So I did purchase these um, milky yellow switches from Pulling Keys. And when they uh, sold them to me, I was like, oh, you're, you're giving me a discount on them. I appreciate it. And they're like, no, that's that's a normal price. Would you like a discount? I'm like, no, that's actually pretty cheap. I was surprised. Uh, I personally have not seen milky yellow is cheaper out of the u.s um than pulling keys carries them but just thought i'd throw that in there now these say they're a pc top palm bottom but the palm is also translucent or the bottom is also translucent so i'm gonna guess it's not the, the bottom housing that's palm i'm gonna think i'm gonna believe that it's the stem that is the palm but they don't clarify very well on the description and i think that these were made specifically for um, warmer XVX, if I'm not mistaken, because I have not seen these anywhere else except preloaded on. I've seen the whites preloaded on their S K71 and the blacks preloaded on this one. All in all, this isn't a bad board. Um, would I recommend it as a first? Perhaps. I mean, if you believe that you're going to be getting into the hobby and you plan to get more boards, this one will give you a good sound and feel out of the box especially since it's top mount so we're going to have a little bit of difference there i think that's probably adding to that sound difference as the other one is just a standard gasket sandwich mount um but you know you can conduct a few mods on here you could switch out the the switches the keycaps put in some um tempest tape mod uh put in either some kill mat or silicone or even some polyfill even something a little bit lighter might make it a little bit deeper, but the case, because it's fairly hollow, I'd put something dense in there, especially if you're going for more of that thocky, marbly kind of sound. Overall, though, I like this keyboard. Um, I am going to add it to... I'm actually breaking down my daily drivers and how I go through them so that I'm going based on layout. So this is going to go into my 75% layout um, where I basically just switch it in and out 
uh, use it for at least a day. I try to do two days on them, but sometimes I just switch them out. And it, you know, first thing in the morning, I got to get used to it. And then, you know, by the middle of the day, I'm either like, okay, I'm used to it, I like it, or I'm pulling it off and using another board. And I'll report that when I do come back to mod this keyboard, which I will be doing here in the near future. Anyway, at, at, it's a pretty good keyboard. The software is better than what's available on the GMKs as far as uploading um, GIFs. It doesn't take as long, and it doesn't crash. I don't know how many times I've had the screen customizer software acts for a picture, pit, pit, picture, pit cure, pit cure. That's what it says. Would you like to upload a pit cure? I mean, I understand the differences, but come on. Where is your quality assurance? I mean, I know when I'm doing software development, I do my best to stay away from interfaces, but there's a lot of times I do have to, whether it's through APIs or through other processes or actually building a user interface. Um, I double and triple check my spelling, especially, especially when I'm writing software for a different language. What? Yeah, we have libraries for the, you know, to, to, to basically map this, this is where this word should be, or this is where this sentence should be, and they become objects. But you have to go through and make sure that the context is right. Um, thankfully, I'm, I know a few Romance languages. Um, I'm fluent in Spanish. I'm fairly fluent in French and Italian. So for the most part, I can get through and you know figure out if the syntax sounds wrong. I just don't understand why these Chinese companies allow so much misspellings and late as sentences that make very little sense to make it through that's not the case with this and not that i have found anyway everything seems to be spelled correctly um even the um i forgot what it is on the gmk one of the screens has a a misspelling as well and it's just uh it, it, it it's psychological because yes, that the person that did the, the, the typing or the adding of the text is most likely not the programmer, most likely somebody else. So I don't think it speaks too much to the particular product, but it could speak to the culture that that company might have because I've had plenty of Chinese products that the English is fine on it. There is no misspellings. The, the sentences aren't gibberish. They make sense. So I know that it can be done. Why it's not done on these lower cost products, I don't know. But that's those are just my thoughts. It's neither here nor there. So I think that this is a pretty good keyboard. I do wish it was a little bit cheaper, especially with everything that's on the market. But like I said, we did the breakdown, the switches, the keycaps, and because we were you know comparing with a three mode keyboard. We're almost at the same amount of money, so this is a pre-built. XVX is good. Warmer and XVX are good about honoring their warranties, so you're going to be safer buying this, let's say buying from off a shop of AliExpress. And, I mean, I I have I'm three months since I bought, almost maybe two months since I bought a GMK87. I am still waiting for Zoya to send me the software. They, they message me maybe once a week. Do you need the software? Where do you need it? I'm like, well, it'd be nice if you just put a link on your page, but here's my email address. AliExpress doesn't accept it, so I have to be cryptic and put my email address with the at symbol in parens and the dot in parens. And they still say, well, well uh, we emailed you, we think. Did you receive it? Like, no. Um, I have not had any luck whatsoever trying to get in touch with anybody at Zoya to have a meaningful conversation because there are some issues. People are now starting to report a lot of units they receive that are faulty. No RGBs, half RGBs, keys that don't work, Windows keys. Uh, three people, three different people. One of them has received six boards and his Windows keys don't work on all of them. So it, that's the seems more than just a coincidence it seems to be something wrong and they're asking him to do a video to see if he punched out the pet plastic it's like shouldn't you guys punch that out first so i am i'm not saying don't buy from zoya but i am getting very i'm getting uncomfortable recommending them when i can't even get a link 
to the software for the products they sell. It's like they're just churning out keyboards and they're like, well, we don't have to pay for support or warranty, so that's why we can sell them so cheap. But the number of reports that I'm getting for GMK boards, I'm almost to the point that I'm going to film a video and suggest that people not buy Zoya keyboards at all. Because it's one thing, I mean, defective units happen. But if you can't get a hold of anybody, if you can't get any support, then what's the point of you putting your name on a product? You need to stand behind your product. I mean, I don't care if it comes from China. I don't care if it comes from Yugoslavia. Yes, I know that's not a country anymore. I'm just, if you remember the Yugo. <laughs> anyway, I am not here to bash Zoya, but I'm just letting you guys know that that is probably a video that's coming here in the near future because Zoya does not communicate. Anyway, XVX does. Um, I've got a couple more keyboards from them that I'm, I'll be reviewing here in the near future, but I wanted to get to this one because I thought this is a nice, sharp-looking keyboard. I did think it was 3-mode, but I didn't see a revision that's 3-mode. Um, I would recommend if you do buy it, make sure to upgrade the patch on it first and come back and let me know. Come over to our budget keys, share your build, let us know. You know, maybe you've got the actual Kanagawa um, there's a couple of Kanagawa sets and you actually, you know, load up the keys a little bit different. Very cool. And I'd like to see it. I'm sure a lot of people would. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with a stock sound test of the Wormier XVX S-K80. A 75% wired with a customizable TFT screen. Until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.